Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arts and part five of this bluegill brim wood carving project. In this segment, I'm going to be permanently gluing the fins on and mounting the eyes. Um, let me set this down here. Um, got the eyes made and I did that off camera. And uh, just real quick, I'll show you how I did that. Um, I just cut some my wooden dowels and I cut these little slugs out. And then uh, I used a belt sander to bring it down to the size I needed, which on this one is a 13 millimeter. So I had to sand it down just a little bit. Uh, but then what I do is I go in and I cut out the pupil. I drill the pupil out and, and shape it to the shape it needs to be. Paint the inside of that uh, a flat black. And then I paint the iris. And then I use a uh, epoxy resin to create the dome or the cornea of the eye. Uh, but like I said, I do have a video on that that shows the process from beginning to end in detail and I go into the reasons why I make them versus buying glass eyes. So if you want to check that out, if you haven't seen it already, it's, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below or one of the links or one of the corners up here. Uh, just be sure and watch this before you go that. Uh, but I also want to take just a second to apologize for it being so long between part four and part five of this, of this project. Uh, as some of you know, I'm an avid fisherman, but I also love to deer hunt. And uh, last month uh, in November uh, was our modern gun season here in Arkansas. So uh, I went out and deer hunted for a couple weeks uh, down deer camp. Spent a couple weeks deer camp, deer hunting. And uh, but it also kind of coincides mid-November through December is is my busy month at work or busy time of the year at work, and I am 90 miles an hour. So I didn't have time to work on this like I wanted to. I did manage to get the eyes done, uh, but uh, I'm off now until after the first of the year, so I'm gonna be hard and heavy on this project trying to get it finished up for you guys. Uh, part six will probably be painting, and then uh, and then I'll be ready to start on moving to a new project. But anyway, enough yammering. I'm gonna get the camera turned around here and get started. Okay, I think I'm gonna mount the eyes first. Get these fins out of the way. And then I'll glue the fins in. Um, so what I do is I use epoxy red or an epoxy sculpt. And this is a two part um, epoxy clay so to speak and mix it together and I'll show you that here in a second and then uh, use it to form the eyes here so let's see how that's coming along so let me get the epoxy out here and we'll get started Okay, for um, to make this epoxy sculpt, uh, you use equal parts, part A and part B. I think my the white part of this is um, I don't think it's supposed to dry without being mixed, but it almost feels like it's getting a crust on it. I don't know if, if you've ever used that. Have you? If you had that problem before, um, I popped a piece in the microwave to warm it up a little bit because it seemed hard, but it seems good and pliable now. But um, anyway, the way I mix them is to get the equal amounts. To me, it's easier to roll it out to roughly the same size. And that way I know it's roughly the same amount. So I'm gonna roll this out a little thinner here. And mix them together. What I like to do is I'll just twist the pieces together to start the activation. Mash them together. Probably should have rolled them out a little thinner. Made 
do that several times. Twist them together. Put it down the hole there. And this eye, if you notice, on a bluegill, it's got almost like a little teardrop shape on the pupil. And you want that teardrop shape to be horizontal with the body. And on this one, I want it to be looking down just a little bit. Make sure that pupil's perpendicular, or horizontal with the body. I'm going to roll out a little thin piece here, put it around it. I need some water over here. I got a little bit of water and it doesn't hurt this to get wet. But it just helps smooth it down in there a little better. I mixed up way too much. I'm just filling in that gap. Pressing it down in good. I make my eye sockets, I think I mentioned that, I make the eye sockets a little bigger than they need to be. So that the uh, I have plenty of room to get um, the epoxy sculpt down in there. Because so now what I'm doing now is I'll build up the uh, sclera or the eyeball part of the eye. Kind of see the sclera part of the eyeball forming. Get my finger down here in the water, smooth it out real good. I want just a little bit of the eye socket showing. So 
So I basically just kind of did the same thing on this side as I did on the other side. Just work it in there and start smoothing it out. And these little tools here are invaluable when it comes to uh, working on these fins. And I get these from uh, a set. I think there were several more than, well, that's a different set. Maybe this was all of them, six pieces. But um, each piece has a little bit different shape. And, and um, this is one of my favorites right here. This, this one tiny little flattened spoon shape on it and then I'm, it's not sharp but it's a knife edge type and then this is probably a good one too it's the same one but it's it's flat instead of horizontal uh, but they're all they all come in real good um, handy for different things um, but you can buy that set at Hobby Lobby I think it was like six bucks. It wasn't much, and they're they're decent, solid. You know, Hobby Lobby's not known for the best quality stuff in the world, but uh, sometimes if you look, you can get some um, you can get some good tools from them. So um, I go in there a lot and find little things like this a lot. So there's the eyes. Mounted in, well, bulging out just a little bit. Looking down slightly. And I'm gonna give that uh, epoxy, it's pliable for about 20 minutes and then it gets too hard to start setting it's too hard to work with so I'm gonna let this set good and then I'm going to um, so actually I can start gluing in the fins and then I'll glue, go ahead and glue in the fins now and then I'll be able to uh, and I'll use a little bit of the epoxy sculpt to blend the fins into the body so let me go ahead and do those now go ahead and glue these in and and I've said this before, I know there are guys that may be cringing right now, but um, when I first started doing fish, the way to do it was to mix auto bondo. And you put in there, you mix up the uh, regular old bondo that you would use for automotive uses, put it in there and squeeze it in. But to me, that's just a big mess. Um, with this super glue I use a, a thick set super glue and I need to find my I need to find my uh, where is it the uh, quick set spray but once you get those in there with that super glue they are not coming out um the wood will break before the glue fails. So let me find uh, let me find my quick set. All right, I got my insta set here. Make sure my glue's not stopped up. Oh, that's good. All right, so what I do is spray a little insta set on in the groove and then super glue down the side like I say I like to stick set for this for a 
second. And it's in there. And it is not going anywhere. bit of gap right here that I can fix with the epoxy putty but that looks good right through there I may put just a little, a little bit of a gap down here so let me put this bottom one in here Had a little piece of paper in there to make that I had to put that fan in and out so much it was getting loose and falling out. So again. That's done. <laughs> Let's see, I'm messing up in here. And the reason I like this thick set is because it doesn't soak into the wood very fast and it kind of stays in place. And the 
fins are on, so we have a solid piece now. And what I'll do, like I say, is I'll take epoxy sculpt and I'll fill in any gaps. A couple of them are really close. Um, we'll have to build up a little bit of a muscle here and probably a little bit right there. And just a real thin ribbon of it along the fin, the anal and dorsal fin. The better you get the, the better you make the groove and tab, the more close it'll fit. I'm not quite there yet. I'm getting better at making it fit. I mean, I've seen guys that do it and you don't need to even put any epoxy sculpt on it. It just fits on there and it, like it's supposed to be. Um, but I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> so I will make uh, some little, make up some more epoxy sculpt to fill in these little gaps. Okay, I've got the muscle made with the epoxy sculpt here on this fin. And I'm just taking, I'm not burning, this is my burning pen. But I'm just imprinting the scales back in that epoxy sculpt so that, so that it blends in with, so it looks like scales. I mean, because they're covered with scales. that muscle has it in there too. Blended it in here, took care of the little gap that was there. Had a gap over here that I fixed up. Now I'm gonna fix the muscle on this side here too. So let me get a little piece of uh, epoxy sculpt here. And I'm just gonna flatten it out into a moon shape kind of here width of the muscle see it. <laughs> Bad about getting off camera. A little tool here and kind of blend the spines into the meat of the scale or the muscle here. Take my, we'll blend that just a little bit smoother there. And I'll take my burning pen, 
without burning. <laughs> Start about midways here. And I probably need to do a little bit bigger here. See that pressure of the scales in there or not? And once it's painted, it'll blend a little better. This one fit fine, so I'm not gonna have to do any epoxy sculpt on that. Same with this side; it was um, it had a good close fit. And I'm gonna put a little thin ribbon down this side of the uh, anal fin so let me get that spread out here pull that nice and thin it won't take much it's a really tiny crack All right, that one's blended in. All right, I got the all the gaps sealed, filled up with the epoxy sculpt, and I'm gonna give that a chance to. Um, 
set up and harden and then it'll get a uh, then I'll put the sealant on it in the and it'll be ready to gesso and then on to painting. Okay, that's gonna be it for part five of this bluegill brim wood carving project. Um, all the fins are on, the gaps are, what gaps there were on the fins have been sealed with epoxy sculpt. And then of course the eyes have been mounted. Give you a close up of that eye there. Kind of see uh, what it's looking like. In the front view of it, see them sticking out just a little bit, bulging out. But anyway, uh, I think it's starting to come out pretty good, turn out pretty good. I was going to seal it in this segment, but I think I'm going to let the epoxy sculpt set up overnight before I do that. And then, um, so part six coming up, I will I'll seal it and then uh, gesso it and then probably spray um, airbrush the first base coats of color on. And then uh, part seven, I'm sure we'll be finishing up with... Uh, hand detailing, scale tipping, that sort of thing, getting the uh, the final layers of paint on there uh, for the final detail. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them for me in the comment section below. And I really appreciate you guys watching and following along with these. If you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like these videos. And um, if, if, you want, if you want to follow along and keep up with them, be sure and hit that notification bell. Uh, but anyway, I'll see you guys on part six coming up.